Bekenning podcast. Yeah, things off. First things first. One of the questions that came through: Where did where did Kipper come from? Uh, my look, well, most people from mountain biking all know this, but uh, basically, my older brother when we were in primary school, there was there was books like the Biff Chip and the Magic Key or something in primary school, and there's yeah, a yeah. little actor in it called Kipper, and yeah, he yeah. has blonde hair and. My older brother just came home one day and thought I looked like him, and yeah, called me and it stuck like glue. That's so. it. Just, just stick. Well, that was one of the first questions that came through. But Chris, you started racing. I was, I was doing a bit of my, my, my googling today and a bit of research and stuff. Um, and there, there was one story that came up, and I, I can remember it. Uh, sort of it happening, and that was going from A A four to basically A one within a few weeks. Um, yeah, that was. 20, 2015 that would have been it, it sort of came from downhill then yeah that summer. was my first I did I had done one race before that the year previous which was the Madigan GP I think it was yeah Um, and I really enjoyed it and then I was kind of falling out of love with racing competitively and downhill just because it was it was so tough you were spending like I was basically working all winter to travel all summer away from home and it was it was yeah. a hard slog and it was I was just kind of not motivated to race so I wanted to try something different so I actually kind of did I went to enduro mountain biking as that was kind of I think 2015 was when it started to get really popular and the EWS and stuff was being launched and like I kind of did that but did road cycling as well with it hand in yeah. hand and then I started doing some road races one my first day three race or my first day four race on a clone. Right. And the very next day went and did the Phoenix GP and A3. Yeah. And won it. Okay. Um, and then I just from then I was I was just glued to the feeling of winning a road race because it was so tactical, so different to mountain biking. I think yeah, that's yeah. what uh yeah, what what I liked about it. So I after that I just, just kept racing and managed to do quite well, I think. Yeah. I just remember the stories that I was hanging about with like a couple of riders that were A3, A4 at the time and, the, and they were saying, oh, it's this guy, Chris McGlinch, he's coming through and, and you know, he's a downhiller and you're just like, right. And they were saying, yeah, he's, he's just riding off up the road and, and he's winning. And I was going, yeah, but he's winning and you've been A3 for years. So this guy's doing something right. And then I, I think I rode that to the north and you, you just didn't do everything by the rule book. You just threw it out the window and we're like trying to attack from the word go and, and get it up the, up the road early. And like yeah. your your approach to racing is completely different than, than I'd seen for a long time. Like, I think it was actually at that tour of the north that I got the points that I needed to get up the A one. I think I started it as an A two and then got, right. upgraded, yeah. got upgraded during it. But I mind if I kind of kick myself now looking back at it because if it had, if I'd have raced it the way I would race now, I'd yeah. have maybe won it because I had the legs to win it. But I just raced like an abs. I just. Yeah. Yeah, it was like a dog chasing a bone at the time. And like, like I was talking to Lindsay, and I don't know whether it's just like this, like a sort of approach from like downhillers just come the road, where like you know, maybe once you get into road racing a bit more, where, where downhillers are just like, you just need to go out and do miles, and you know yourself that stands stands by you for a while. So yeah. if you haven't been doing loads of miles, and then all of a sudden doing it, then you're gonna have this this like legs almost like really good legs. Yeah, so that's where. I think you came in and just had this like real strong strength from the downhill, but then also just like the endurance as well. Yeah, no, I, th- I think that it's a funny one because I like if I look at all the mountain bikers that have come across and done well, they're all, I, I think it's probably something to do with the type of training as well. You did mountain biking where yeah. like it's a lot of gym based work. Like I did loads of sprints and plyometric stuff and it was all really high intensity. Like I would have never went out and done a three, four hour road ride. Right. But I think having done loads of that sprint style training and like just hard strength work in the gym, yeah, yeah. adding endurance onto that once I started doing road, yeah. it kind of meant that I was yeah I was building the endurance, but I had this sprint kind of right. for mountain biking. So it was kind of doing it the reverse of what people would yeah. normally yeah, like yeah. you'd have a base and then you'd you chip away at it, whereas I had the the sharp end but just needed to build the base. That's so exactly it. Yeah, yeah. And then that, so that was 20, 2015, and then 2016, I, like I've never ridden the Ras Munum, but I just remember hearing the reports, again, <laughs> you threw the rule book out the window there, 
And uh, what, what was he called with a guy that was uh, going well at the time? And he was the crystal. And like yeah. he, he's an absolute machine. And you wrote, you wrote away from him basically. And I think it was just a two man, two man race. That whole from reading the reports and sort of hearing like, like what happened, you were basically on your own the whole weekend. Yeah, well, uh, you know, the team the team we had was really strong. Like it was managed by McCann, and then I think of Daryl Mahoney, Craig McCauley, Ian Richardson. Actually, he doesn't he doesn't race anymore, but yeah. he was super strong at the time. Um, and Fendon Ryan actually as well. So it was a good, it was a really good squad. Um, but I, yeah, I just had magic legs. Like yeah, yeah. our first day, I think there was three of us from the Ar- or from the Irish team in the front group and I managed to win the sprint mark darling led it out he, he went really long yeah um won the sprint and then yeah the next couple of days it was basically me versus uh what was the Asaya or whatever they yeah, were yeah. called no, they say it, was, yeah, yeah. it was Ali McCauley actually Ali? And yeah. Crystal were, they were second and third I think on GC um but it was that it was that second day I think was the the hardest day of the whole weekend, it was pissing down rain. I get up, it went up Healy Pass or one of those big, yeah, yeah, big descents or big climbs. But yeah, it was. I just, I, I think I prepared really well for that. Like I trained really hard. It was a like what my biggest goal of the year. And David McCann's obviously real experienced uh, director, and it, it kind of all just clicked. Like yeah, and so, yeah, it was. It was. I awesome. just remember hearing the reports and then. And then a sticky, if you really want to look at it, and then you can go on, on the sticky button, look at all your numbers and all that sort of stuff there on there as well, which, which are crazy as well. Like, um, when you're racing then, would you go by the power meter, maybe in the likes of those longer races? No, rarely, unless like, unless I was doing a breakaway and then, or unless I was attacking solo. Like the only yeah. time I ever look at the power meter is if I'm attacking solo and I know there's like, half an hour left in the race i know roughly how much i can do but yep, to judge it yeah like it's super hard because you know how you know how much you can do for 20 minutes fresh but yeah. three hours in the race it's totally different so you, yeah, yeah. you kind of use it as a bit of a gauge so you don't overcook yourself but i would yeah. i would try and ride on fail most of the time and then only look at that if i'm trying to really kind of pace yeah. an effort and then so that was 2016 2017 2018 up to up to now then the team sort of like team Vitus is on being on the go then, and you've ridden a couple of bigger races since then, like the like Tour of Yorkshire and a lot of races in Belgium as well. Yeah, yeah, mainly. So, did a couple of races abroad with the Irish teams at LM Tour, I think was my first yeah. international race, and it was have I felt I near felt like giving up the bike after that weekend. It was a it was grim weather, my first experience of crosswinds, like this pan flat road is split into like eight groups and I like I'd never in an echelon before so I was proper like baptism by fire but it was it was crazy um but yeah York, Yorkshire was probably the biggest race I've ever ridden Um that was an unreal experience I think there's a photo uh someone took and it was me in the front like with Mark Cavendish on one side and Chris Froome on the other Burn, side of the front and, started and it was like it, it was an unbelievable experience racing with people of that that caliber yeah yeah and then you also you have a big result there at the pj logan where you beat me as well 2016 ah yeah i remember I did, right. that was that was a couple of weeks after ass moon as well so it's yeah. on i was on magic form then yeah i i really enjoy that course and uh, i can remember racing that and going I, 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 and that course is a sort of course where you can stay away on your own because it is long yeah. by yeah and yeah. uh we were in the group and I remember you going. I was like, oh, well, that's that going, that's that going. <laughs> oh, it's just one of them where you just have to be accepted. Um, and then me and you also had a bit of a ding dong at the, the cross champs then in 20, was that 2016, oh, 2017? Um, you, you were second, weren't you? Did yeah, you yeah. Beat like two seconds. Uh, I, rem- I mind that. I, I, cause you, I was in front and you got me like on the last lap or the second yeah. last lap, didn't you? That was, yeah, that was brilliant. I had punctured just on the first lap. Remember, it was at uh, not Ross Trevor, was it? Yeah, Ross well, Trevor. Was it? And uh, Ross Trevor, yeah. And uh, went downhill in through the forest, and I had punctured just as we passed the pits. Ah, uh, yeah. So for the first lap, I was like trying to block everybody so they couldn't get past me and run the corners wide. 
got the change and then just working my way back up. And uh, I, I was like, right, I need a medal. Third is, is doable. I'm, I remember getting in the third and then coming up to you at the boards and, and you ran them and I jumped them and I was like, right, it's a bit long, but let's go for it from, from here. But uh, you just came back at me and it was a long left hander up to the climb. Yeah, I, yeah. I was empty at the time, like, yeah. That was, yeah, that was brilliant. I love cross champs is always, it's yeah. always a tough one, but I, uh, no, I, enjoy, I can't wait for cross season already. Yeah, like and I, then going, going back to the cross then, so last cross champs, you, you were in first, you were in second with Mr. Conroy, and it was oh. a great race to watch. Uh, that was a tough one. I just, I wish the course was a little bit different. Like it yeah. was, there was so much running and I, like I, I probably ran more than Conroy did, but like, I felt my legs were so strong that weekend. And if there was more just oh, areas where you yeah. could just put the power down, I, I felt it maybe would have been a little bit closer again, again than it was. He, I think he had better technique in the riding through mud. Like I, yeah. I struggled to put the power down in the mud. I don't know if it was tire choice or tire pressure or what it was, but. But you're, yeah, you're not, know. you're not someone that will do like a full cross season. Um, which is frustrating for someone like me the, the watch you know like I do a full cross season and then you come and do two or three before the, the champs and then medal and it's like ah. yeah I, I would still do the train like it's for I suppose coming from a downhill background like my skills there and I can handle a bike fine so I know I'll be all right to handle the bike and then I just do the sharp kind of race style efforts anyway so like I would like to do a full cross season but it's just realistic to do it competitively and to have two bikes and to have a pit crew and like trying it like my team will be based over in England and just yeah trying to get people to wash my bike and stand out and minus yeah. two degree like I can't ask that of people every, every single weekend so I'd rather and I'm the type that wants to be competitive so I, like yeah, I don't yeah. want to turn a muddy race on one bike and be giving away an advantage because everyone else is on two bikes yeah, so yeah, that's it. Yeah, do two or three races before champs and then I normally do Ulsters and Irish champs as well. Support them because you support, you've supported a lot of the events that we have done. I thank you for that. Um, the likes of the, the UCI race as well. You, you rode the steps yes. one of the laps, didn't you? Ah, uh, yeah. Flynn wreck, yeah. wreck on the rims. I, I, I did it in practice. I don't think yeah. I did it. Yes. Yeah, that was a great, great event, Mike. But um, yeah. I, just come back. I think I just come back from me and Carly gone traveling for five or six months and towards the end of 20 it was on 2018 that event wasn't it yeah it would have been 2018 yeah yeah we, we were back traveling from in May or, May or June time so I'd only like I'd, I'd been off the bike for like six months and started training again and kind of had it I think that was the first year they did the foil three day as well that race running and yeah, yeah. Race organized so it was in it was an all right shape but it would have been good to go into that like properly properly fit as well that that event was class i remember i just know that um oh his name is slipped my head the guy that does all the, the organizing of the cross races uh gremlin martin gremlin yeah, his whole thing is with the champs that you, you know if you want a good start at the champs you have to do the full season to get the front, front row grid and i think up to maybe a few years ago getting the front row grid was really important but now with the courses sort of going a bit more European style and wider there is a lot more chances to pass where you know someone like yourself that maybe won't get a, a front row grid maybe a second or third it's not going to affect as much you know and especially in our race where like there's, there's starts uh, I've been on can't even get the 10 guys wide you know yeah so that's I think any of the any of the champs that I've done it's been a super wide straight like you could start back row and if you were if yeah. you rode hard you'd get get into the top five within the yeah. first first big corner so and then you were the, the e-tracks race as well oh yeah that, that was, was brilliant. something different yeah i de i was i decked out on that one and uh that's right I was in the final. yeah no that, yeah, yeah. that was really good I, I enjoyed that they actually were on the other week about us starting to look at that again but it was just financially you would need the run maybe like a full day's racing at it just to, to try and get the cost you can't expect them to, to do it for free like you know yeah so on to the main sort of subject which is like of recent would be your swift you're you're the what would you say the man of swift the man that the beat at the moment um yeah. 
E so World Championships. E World Championships. What was it? What was the result there? I was thir- 13th of the world. 13th in the world in Swift champ- champion. And then Tour of the North last week. What was the Tour of Ulster? Uh, I, need to see, I need to see what the weather's doing that weekend. <laughs> see if uh, Carly and I have anything planned. But no, I'd, I could like to do it. I yeah. would, would like to do it. There's no uh, up to Swift on that. So that's, that's slightly nicer. How, was, did you, uh, how did you find the weekend then? Did you did you enjoy the racing? Yeah, no, it was it was brilliant. It was nice to uh, like look at a leaderboard and be like, right, he's beat me by eight seconds, so I need to make that up on him and actually race tactically over yeah, yeah. days. Like I've I've only ever done like single day races properly on Zwift, so it it was fun to do a stage race and actually so finish the, one race. The first stage, you it was just a group finish, wasn't it? Yeah, it was. I think oh. I was. Seven. I messed the sprint up on that. I went too late. And then, yeah, because I finished second. I think I actually beat you. Oh, you got, yeah, you did. Uh, what first time for everything. And then <laughs> the TT. Then what? How did you do in the TT? Uh, I was second. Okay. And that by I think the guy Andy. I think his name was he. Yeah. He yeah. by about eight seconds, and then the French guy was like half a second behind me so it was really tight between us but so what way did did you opt to ride the, the time trial so i have a game plan so i done i'd done a time trial on that stage before so i kind of knew roughly how to pace it um but i didn't really know how my form was so i decided to try and go in and around 400 ish i tried a negative pace it because you're going to make more time up riding yeah. hard on a climb so i rode it around 400 410 watts on the flat and then tried to just ride as hard as i could on the the hill it ended up being i think i averaged 460 470 on the climb for what so it's like how long is that for six minute effort so it was kind of VO, vo2 max style effort yeah um i did i was doing 400 for, for for i think i got a couple of i was got a couple of good results that week but I'm doing those sort of numbers, but I'm 80 kilos at the moment. Do you know what I mean? So that's that's what people don't understand when they first come to Swift, is you're doing 400 watts, but I'm doing 400 watts, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it's the, the I think on some courses, it really favours people that can just put out raw power, like the flatter yeah. courses, whereas the, the lighter guys will struggle there. But any time it goes above five six seven percent it's it's pure watts per kilo on on zwift and then the next day then was the watopia circuit yeah and um it had a what a two minute effort climb at the start of it and it, it yeah. was quite it was quite hard now for me i was just at the towards the end of every lap just about getting the toolbar on you know what i mean um it, it, on. it, it was tight and how did it, you end up getting like away in that one didn't you yeah I, I ended i ended up winning that one i was trying probably too hard to get ready your man Andy and and he he was really strong he, he matched me up all the climbs but then I went like 2k from the two or 3k from the line and there was a guy that wasn't racing the series okay was racing that race and he went and kind of pulled your man Andy across him so it's was, was kind of gutted because like if he hadn't no went then he would your man Andy would have had to chase me and I, I yeah, maybe yeah. would have stayed away and maybe maybe not wouldn't have had to put as much time or effort in on the on the final stage. And I get, on the on the Monday stage, I think I give it a good go just to try and split it up to try and get away. And I remember you saying, you know, you guys need to learn how to how to get it, you know, to form a break. And then somebody else commented you can't get away on a flat course. But then I'm sort of thinking in my head, you know. If you can do it in the real world, you're bound to be able to do it on Swift. Oh, yeah. You just need the, the right people to, yeah. to come out. I, yeah. I was I was saying to the people that were chasing because I tried to get across to you and me, me and you were going to do it, but like try and stay away. But yeah. basically, yeah, the guy like doing it. So Swift works on like the whole blob, like yeah. for a dynamic thing. So like if if someone, it's the exact same in road cycling. Like if it's if you want to, if if you tr- if you want to form a break, you you just put in a hard dig so you don't drag anyone with you. Whereas most people there, they just see someone go and then they just like gradually yeah. ramp it up. Yeah, and try not to p- p- the whole group with you. Whereas if I was, if I saw a couple of people go, and I I kind of know right, 
I'll let them get maybe eight, nine, ten seconds and jump then across. and yeah. jump really hard so that nobody comes with me and then try and form it that way. Whereas as most people don't give them enough of a gap to happen. See, it's usually it's, a, it's the opposite way around from in the hills, you know, I'm ho- hoping the blob will get me over the hill, you know. Start at the front. <laughs> well, I, I have tried that. What is it? Allow yourself a bit of slippage room. Yeah. Uh, I actually got a feather and I kept it the whole way for the last the last lap on, on that third stage and it just about made it. Um, and then this, the Monday stage in, the, and you know yourself, two in the North Queen stage. Uh, First thing, bro. like, did you eat a breakfast before that? Yeah, so I got up. So it was started at 10. So, so I got up at like just before seven. So well, I, well in the pit by that stage like so i uh I, I got up early and had a big bowl of porridge and made a good few hours beforehand because like, if i like if i had an hour before that effort i'd have thrown yeah yeah needed a, a good bit before it i think i burnt off like 1800 calories yeah i think like i was that. i was something pretty similar it was near i think it was two two thousand calories yeah. I burnt. so talk us through how did that stage go for you because like i just got unplugged at the first the first hill that through the jungle and I'd called it on the podcast a few days before saying, yeah, a couple of boys will get caught out there. <laughs> yeah, I, I just went hard up every climb. I had no, my tactic was try and, try and thin it out on the epic. Yeah. And I kind of went early up that and nobody came with me. I was kind of hoping maybe one or two people would come with me and the leader would get caught out and would work together and it'd be fine. But I, I basically just spent that 20 seconds ahead to be caught on the downhill by like so, yeah. people. anyway so I, I i'd have probably saved myself a bit of effort and just stayed in the front group and let it naturally thin itself out but i kind of wanted to wanted to test my legs and i managed to win a set of smart skills in the process oh, seriously well. did you yeah, yeah have you got them yet <laughs> yeah they arrived today actually so any, no, nobody's came forward for the vouchers yet so no happy no. days yeah <laughs> all, all the foreigners uh, got them what was i gonna say I so, uh, then there was maybe nine or ten of us on coming into that final climb, and I didn't really know how. You, like I kind of tried to test everyone's legs a couple of times early on, and everyone was reacting. So it's, after that, I kind of just sat in and kind of saved my energy until I think it was maybe halfway up the climb. The guy, the French guy, actually attacked. I okay. went with him, and then the guy Andy, that was the race leader, got distance. So we just worked quite well together for a while and then I think maybe three quarters of the way up I just sat on your man's wheel and he was he was tapping out, out some good power I'd, I'd seen beforehand he'd done with six watts per kilo for 20 minutes before on the okay so I was like right he's a stronger climber than me so I'm just yeah, gonna yeah. hang on here and uh I was I had to dig proper deep like that last that last kilometer I was glad yeah. He'd attacked me once, I managed to respond. So then he kind of backed it off because he thought I was maybe going to go over the top of him. But I was properly bluffing at that stage and was just hanging on by a thread. And he went again at the end and managed to get a bit of a gap. But thankfully, I, I hung not, on. Not enough. But it, it was, yeah, it was, it was grim. It was the it was most hard run for, I think I got a PB 60 minute par all time. Seriously, and yeah. Then, yeah, it was like three hundred. Like you, you, I rarely do a sixty minute. Like I'd never do yeah. a sixty minute effort. Um, and it was like three hundred and seventy five watts for sixty minutes. Oh, and I'd be, my thirty thirty five minutes was like four hundred and fifteen or something. Like oh, it was geez. that's crazy numbers. I could, could walk the next day. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and I think he did did that climb. Was it thirty five minutes? The last one. Thirty five. Yeah. Yeah. I think it was an hour and thirty five. <laughs> I completely blew. I was with Kevin Lynch's group and with them instead of sitting with them nicely we were tapping out a nice rhythm I got the race head on and attacked them and the heart rate, the heart rate went from 170 uh, 165 and just went right down to 120 yeah. and I, I was like this on the turbo and I was like right I need to just finish it and uh, had to like put my hands down and unclip the shoe and all to get off that's grim yeah. it, was, it was hard no, really, really. it was good now the, the tour of Ulster it seems a bit different. It's not uh, time based. It's going to be points. Yes, yes, I haven't I haven't read too much into that yet. Yeah, I presume it'll maybe be similar to so the Premier League races we do. They have like you get maybe five, four, three, two, one points on a okay. king of the mountain 
sprint and then it goes like 30 down to one for finish line okay. so and that's automated through swift yeah swift power i okay. think it is okay okay um and then yeah so you'll you'll kind of just build up an amount of points and i think it's basically the person with the most points wins over the over the and duration of the race yeah, i'll probably just write it and just try and get around in the group and that, that will be my box tech you know um so like regarding swift racing you do a quite a bit of racing on it and like would any, they're all open to everyone or do you get invited to races and stuff as well yeah so we there's the Zwift Premier League which is it's, it's invite and then um, qualifying based so there's that like the Zwift Racing League that anyone can do but you need you kind of can form a team and apply to it and there's different yeah. time zones and if you win your league you get promoted it's kind of like three or four leagues and you get eventually you can get promoted into the Premier League, which is we're all like basically all the, the top pro pro Zwift teams. Like there's the, that Canyon Esports team and there's yeah, yeah. Pro's Clausa and there's the, the movie star team are racing in it now as well. Prize money? Uh, yeah, yeah, there's right. D, there's D prize money. Yeah. And uh like big thanks to is it Glibby I give you I think you got kitted out as well for the Channel yes. North. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, the the jacket, the jacket, the quality. Of kit, I've never had any of it. The quality of the kit looks looks really good. I'm looking forward to trying that winter jacket out. Yeah, I know Mark got stuff off of him, and he's over the moon. I don't, I haven't heard any bad reports from, yeah, from any no, of the stuff. Like no, Lindsay, Lindsay says it's right. good. Yeah, no, it's it's spot on. It kit literally arrived like the next day as well. He, he was straight on it, and the post is brilliant. Oh well. Hopefully, I think Mark did a bit of a raffle for the for the Kenning vouchers. I think he might have given them to some Japanese writers. So yeah, good luck, good luck to them. Um, so your Swift setup, like I've, I watched the interview with Ronan, um, and like you have a full, like I wouldn't say marginal gains, but you've you've taken everything not to the extreme, but you've just done a lot of wee edits here and there. Yeah, it was I mainly I mainly did a lot like the likes of the ceramic. I'm not using the ceramic speed. Uh, jockey wheels anymore because it's it's on my TT bike now or I've kept it fresh from a TT bike but that was for the the world champs um, and yeah. the main reason for that as well was because we had we had to use our turbo trainers as our primary power source so you'd like on Zwift you could use your power meter or you could use your turbo trainer yeah um, and we had to use our turbo trainers so drive train efficiency and things like that yeah. came in into it then so i kind of went a bit geek mode and made sure that i had really efficient drive train um, yeah i think you need to like you know you know if, if it's go, gonna be the next hopefully we get a better race in here but if you're if you're taking it anyway serious you have to have to yeah. look at these things you know yeah um, definitely depends what level you want to go and how much money you want to spend on it but there's there is things like so you changed the jockey wheels and what was the other thing you've done the, the ceramic bottom bracket yeah 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 and then the, the weights, the weights as well. I seen that and couldn't couldn't believe that. Oh no! Like I I can't imagine how anyone can sprint on it without weights. Like I, if I'm proper, like sprinting high on the road, I'd be wobbling all over the place. Like it, yeah. It uh, it does help stabilize things. See, I seen Big Ross sprinting, and then as soon as I seen it, I realized I don't think I go hard enough on on Swift. I just I just don't give it give it enough, and I think that that's my my uh, my downfall See, on it. Yeah. You you'd maybe like think of when you're sprinting because you'll you'll probably get to the point where your turbo yeah. trainer feels like it's nearly wobbling and then you'll just like you'll not go any harder than that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Your mind will just be like, I'm gonna fall over here. And that's not just due to the fact that I've taken the knock, you know. <laughs> so you have that there set up. You're using uh, what was it, a gaming PC? Yeah, the main reason for buying that was just because I wasn't bothered bringing my laptop in and I'm messing around with wires and things like that. I just wanted a permanent setup. Yeah. I could just go to the garage and turn it on, and it was it was easy. Um, and my dad, he um, he was selling his old PC. He's bought a new one, and he did me a good deal on it. Like it was it was dirt cheap for what it was, and yeah, it was yeah. basically that's just, an allocated, yeah, yeah, exactly. You need good graphics card, a, a decent processor, and it was just. So it fixed it just helped. It was mainly, yeah for me it wasn't like it's in terms of a gaming pc it's probably a really low spec one in comparison to what proper gamers yeah. would be using 
but um, it's enough to run Zwift, and it, it just means it's it's handy. I can just get out there and turn the on button on and get going. It. Get it going. A couple of fans, tiles, and then is that is that a good your good race bike that you're using, or is that just a, a Swift bike? No, well, it's it's a Swift bike now, but I, I feel bad to call it a Swift bike because it's a it's my aero road bike. It's the new the new Vita. So it's not it's not been launched yet, but it's their new aero bike. Um, and I've, I've just been using it on the turbo shinner because I kind of, I've got my other, my, my other race bike, the Matesse Evo, and I've been training out in the road on that. So yeah, I'm just keeping it on, on the turbo shinner just to save me again, yeah, yeah. having to take something off and on. So I've got that one permanently on the, the turbo like, and, and like the other bike for the road. The salt and the sweat is hard on the bikes, like, you know, yeah, and, it uh, is. on the bolts and no matter how much you work, like I would, I, I have a bike now that's it's it's died and it's went to the swift when i stripped the brakes and all and, and bar tape off it i put the good bike on for the the, th the three day the, the stage race and like after every stage i made sure to wash it down and, and just rinse it and stuff because yeah. if, if you see my instagram then again and anybody brings a bike in from swift the the bar tape is oh, stinking yeah I, i've had to change my bar tape like three times it's yeah it, yeah, as you say, like no matter how much you clean it, like it's yeah, so it just gets everywhere. Yeah, and there was I think there's was it Ross was telling me of some guy there was another shop and there was a crack on his bars and he was swept in all winter and they took the bar tape off and basically the bar tape was just holding loads of drops. I've seen you know? a couple of those on Facebook forums where people like Ali yeah. bar just rotted away from yeah, sweat. Yeah. Jeez, it's it's bad crazy. like two pairs of gloves and the mask on, regardless of coronavirus, you know. <laughs> so what what's next then um swift wise for you um is there anything else in the, in the pipeline yeah so the the next season of that premier league is starting well it started last week but our our team missed the first the first race but it's every every tuesday for the next eight weeks so okay that'll be the next kind of something that i'll i'll take seriously on swift and train for and yeah. outside of that i'll probably try and do that to revolster and then Hopefully, some yeah, racing. Chip away. I'm, I'm trying to get out in the like the actual road bike a lot more now and just build up some base miles so that if racing does, yeah, start soon that I'm that I'm ready for it as well because I've been like I've been getting away with doing low volume training weeks, but yeah. doing them hard. Um, whereas now I need I'm trying to just get out and do some long rides and try and build the endurance up so that I'm ready for when outdoor racing starts again. yeah i think that, that's the sort of talk of everyone even last year like i was talking to a few guys and they're like oh just keep myself on a nice level if we get notified that racing's happening right it's time time to ramp ramp it up and yeah. it never came you know and you know your head can go easily and just the, the hell yeah. with it that sort of thing so i, I think really having can't. the swift you know one night a week and just dedicate yourself to it and, and, and yeah. go for it you, yeah, did man. you ride any of the wednesday night races no i didn't and if one if he brings it back, I'll I'll do one. It just didn't suit at the time because the way my training had worked out, I had the Monday night races and then I had a hard race on Thursday as well. So the the schedules kind of yeah. didn't really really work. But I think one of them has moved now, so it, it probably would work now. And then what were the cycling Ireland ones? Did you do a few of those? They were I did the first season and won it, and then the set. It was kind of an awkward time, like it, yeah. And kind of when we we'd get up and have our breakfast and stuff, and it it kind of just like I I'd, I'd be a real early riser. Like if it was at nine o'clock, even it yeah. it would have suited me better. But um, no, I just I didn't didn't want to give up my Saturday mornings to do yeah. them too often. So I I just kind of I I dip in and out of it, do the odd one, but I yeah. I wasn't for doing the series it's, again. It, so I think you know. It is hard, especially on a Saturday where you're sort of thinking, like, I could go out and do a bigger run here. Do you know what I mean? That's because you have more of the time where they are after work. Sometimes just, you know, yourself, you can get on Swift half an hour and 15 minutes and, and that's you for an, for an hour's training. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And you get so yeah. much so much out of that. Would you differ your training then for Swift um, as opposed to real world racing? Do you know what I mean? If you understand that. <sighs> Yeah, the past, like the past year, maybe I haven't really been following a structured training plan. Like I've, like I I'm normally in a race season, I'd be coached by Brian McKinney and we'd, we'd have a proper plan and we'd, we'd kind of build into the race season. But 
because of all of this that's happened. It's like I was real, I was real fit in March of last year. Like I'd done a good, good base for the season. Me and Darnell got to do less yeah. man, less man at the start yeah. of the season. Absolute carnage race, and then it was just like that. I think that was sort of Anna clone and less a man were the, the two yeah, yeah. races that we the two. I know. Yeah. I know. Um. And then after that, I just I just kind of carried a bit of that form and raced away on Zwift. And I almost just used, like, I, I did Zwift racing and then I recovered. Like, it was, I yeah, just yeah. did racing and then just easy, easy recovery rides. Uh, I didn't do any structured, like, VO2 reps or sweet spot efforts or anything like that. I would have literally just picked three or four Zwift so, races so in a week, done yeah. those. And then any time that I wasn't racing, just just rode kind of zone two efforts and and rode kind of easy, and it it kept my form really good for for the whole yeah. year. Really. Like in the real world, you you would be a sprinter in, in, in my eyes, but you're also someone that can climb but go long as well. Yeah, it's I I I would probably I probably call myself like someone that's good on rolly sort of courses I wouldn't I don't think I'd be a pure sprinter but I'm definitely not a climber either like yeah. I think I, I could I could probably train myself to be close to a climber with a good kick if I yeah, kind yeah. of focused on on losing a bit of a bit extra weight um but I I like aggressive racing like so I like being able to yeah so that's where the, the, the sort of part that top end part then transfers over to to the swift then yeah yeah. No, that definitely it seems to like Swift seems to favor people that can do a a good one one two minute effort and then a good fifteen second sprint is main like for most courses you'd you'd get a good result on those. It's only the the epic KOM style courses yeah. or the the Leith Hill in, in London, like those ones that are maybe seventy at ten, twenty minute efforts is when I'd maybe struggle a bit compared to the other the other good guys on Zwift. Like I was, I was trying to like I've always worked at my ten and my twenty minute efforts, you know, for for the cross because that they are it's it's an hour's racing. So I've always worked on my ten twenty minute efforts, and then talking to Mark, who was talking to Tommy, and Tommy says, no, it's it's literally your your one minute power for Swift. That's all you need on. Yeah. So it was like, if if you use training peaks, it shows you your your peaks, and mine's like that, and then drops away off you now for for the one minute. So yeah. over the last maybe six months. In the middle of lockdown, and that sort of clicked with me, and I was like, "Right, and um, the difference, you know, just concentrating on one one minute power." Yeah, me is, you know. I think as well, like you're like one. I think you kind of one minute, three to five minute. If you, it's kind of like raising the roof. If you get, if you improve on those, like you yeah, know, yeah. just bring your ten and your twenty minute up as well. Yeah, yeah. So I think people probably focus on that ten twenty minute, like yeah. This, it's what we all like you, you read about your FTP and your 20 minute power and, and all that all too often and people can get so focused on increasing your FTP whereas nobody really looks at that 30 seconds through to three four five minutes and especially road racing in Ireland like when will you when would you ever need a 20 minute 20 minute yeah if somebody's still out after 20 minutes they're they're bitten yeah anyway do you know what I mean <laughs> you know what I mean no you're not gonna ride somebody off for 20 minutes anyway no. So we're not, so yeah. So hopefully we get a bit of racing towards the end of the year and and, oh, and a bit bit of cross. Tell us, you're doing the the camper van up. How's how's yeah. progress there? No, it's going. That's going well, and that's that's why I've not been doing a lot of the Saturday Sunday races. Like I train early in the morning so that I can spend the rest of the day trying to work on camper van. But it's, it's this weather at the minute. It's been oh, it's wild, been yeah. tough. Like it's it's hard to work on it out in the out in the cold. So and what's need, the, what's the plans when you get her get her going? Just uh, the weekend trips to begin with, I think, and then probably take it over over to Scotland, kind of do just do some kind of weekend trips, and then maybe next year, the year after, do do Europe for two three weeks, maybe try and get out the Tour de France or something. Has, and to, has to be done. Take the bikes and park up in the Alp and yeah. have a few beers. Thirty five minutes. Just I know. <laughs> just I just. Uh, mainly something it was a project to keep us sane during lockdown as well like we'd always we went when we went traveling we rented a camper van in australia for three weeks okay and ever since then we were like we we this want is, a camper yeah. and like i i traveled around europe in a camper van when i raced downhill like we 
yeah any team that i was on or teammates that i'd kind of raced with and traveled with we we literally just we bummed it in a camper van and stayed in the pits and just yeah. like that's that's how we did it the cover costs and stuff and i love that life like i love just kind of living out of a van it's yeah it's, it's fun like so um yeah. i just just to have it be a good race weekend camper as well for yeah, the, yeah. oh yeah it's down south like yeah yeah normally i'd be down any races i'd just go down the morning of do like a three-hour drive do a race drive up home now you like, go saturday yeah. park up near the race and i think if i got one my wife would never see me i'd be constantly yeah. away going down to the, the cross races the night before and getting your practice in and that that sort of thing yeah yeah it'd be brilliant with yeah. we've built built a nice uh, bike storage for it as well, well so, that's, that was that was everything after that after the bike storage yeah yeah i've got got the place for the bike sorted and then yeah built, built the rest of the van around that <laughs> it's, it's got some instagram page as well hasn't it it does yeah, yeah I'll, I'll link that down here below so you can get a couple more followers but yeah it's some work yeah. tell us this, the 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 team then it's it's folded has it the vitus team yeah so the v, vitus pro cycling folded at the end of last year um so the the main financial backer uh, they were on for three years they didn't find uh, yeah. a new sponsor to replace that so yeah that, that team fold it was a bit of a shame because the final year we didn't really get to do any racing yeah. especially, especially for Darnell like I, I got a year I got to yeah. do work got to do some big races and he he got one opportunity to show himself and then yeah that, that was it almost so it was, I kind of felt it felt pretty bad for him as well and some of the other guys in the team that didn't really get an opportunity to race it at county level um yeah. but the the ds that that team she ended up she ended up getting a job at um israel startup nation okay yeah Jerry Pridham, so she's the first female ds Burn. in the world tour so she mm-hmm. kind of was like one she got unlucky and her, her team had to fall but then she got this other amazing opportunity to race Burn. race a world tour level so um but yeah no it's it's a bit of a shame but yeah we, I, thought, I did feel for darnell now so it is. yeah i was it, it was a real shame like uh, yeah it, w- it would have been good for i was like i was looking forward to race with him i didn't have any other yeah. irish teammates or like yeah, yeah. over here on on the team the year previous so i was i was looking forward to, to doing a bit of traveling with him and especially when you've raced against someone for so long and then it gets flipped and then, then they're yeah. usually racing together you know I mean, that been good. One of the strongest domestic riders as oh. an ally was was good rather than like I'd always previously that here just raced on my own. Whereas yeah, yeah, Darnell more than likely going to be up the road, and if I was in the chase group, I'd be able to just say two two minutes up the road. I was, I was never, the road. Able, never able to do that before. <laughs> so then, who are you with now for Toxic? What what way are you going to on your license? So um, there's a new team. It's actually it's launching this friday i think it is um Betis are, are back in it as well and mm. sort of wiggle so it's called um spectra wiggle racing powered by okay. Betis. so okay. it's another british based team it's brand new so the guy guy bruce dalton and um, humes and has set up the team i've worked with him in my previous role at Betis before um so he's setting up a, a kind of multi-discipline male female team so it's it's quite unique actually um, okay and then it's going to be basically 50 50 split male female okay um and then totally cross discipline so cyclocross xc road gravel races okay uh, all e-racing as well so it, it's kind of trying to hit every every, uh, every discipline and be just have a full fleet of bikes that are yeah. going to be a service course and like if I wanted to do a mountain bike race one weekend, I just need to tell the team far enough in advance and they'll send me a mountain bike out and I'll go do a race. And then Fine. I can give it back to them and say, oh, I want to do this gravel race. Can I borrow a gravel bike? So you've yeah, got yeah. your primary road bike to train and race on. And then you can just borrow a bike for one of the other disciplines. So it's it's going to be quite cool. And the the fact that like Vitus or no, Chain Reaction and, and Wiggle, that they, they were merged and that they have merged, is yeah. that is that part of that as well then so yeah so wiggle are gonna be sponsoring it so yeah it's it's a kind of it's a funny one like wiggle and yeah. crc merged but they still operate as two separate yeah websites um so on the surface it looks like it's just wiggle but it 
it really yeah. is Wiggle and RC that's supporting it. Um, but yeah, so Wiggle are supporting it as well. Right. Uh, so it'll be good. There's good platform, loads yeah. of opportunity for for good coverage and gives riders and the team an opportunity to just try other racing. Like there's yeah, cross, definitely yeah. There's cross riders that maybe would never have done a tour series race or a crit race, and they'll they'll do a bit of road now, and they'll maybe do a bit of XC mountain biking as yeah, well. Yeah. I'm I'm probably going to try and get over and do a few of the British XC races as well, just because I can, and I'll yeah, yeah. right there. And then yeah. in the back of my head as well, I'm thinking the Commonwealth Games are next year, and yeah, if I, if I do well in XC, I'd I'd maybe get over for that and maybe do the road as well. So where are they? Uh, Yorkshire. So they're oh, they're guys, yeah. I'd I'd like to hope that. Northern Ireland will send a, a big squad to it then. I don't know what the allocation on, on numbers are, but... It, it would make sense, but no one, no one else. <laughs> do you know, know what I mean? Although Ulster have always sent a big a big team away to some British races, and yeah, I'd like to think it's probably... I think it's the same or similar people that will be cycling Ulster with the Northern Ireland. And yeah. Yeah, I think they'll be doing it. So um, I don't know. I don't think there's any sort of... That's a case... Like, for that, yeah. It would be a case of getting the criteria and maybe trying to go outside it a wee bit and even above it, you know. So yeah, it, yeah take a box even trying to get a, one race in Belgium. Yeah, ex- you know exactly, I mean? exactly. And, and take gonna, that box. I'm gonna try and try and do a bit of cross country. Hopefully, do a few road races. Do a few. Hopefully, get over a few British rounds, depending on how travel restrictions and stuff are. Yeah, yeah. And hit the cross season hard in September. <laughs> Finger, fingers crossed. Fingers crossed. Yeah, because I'm looking at doing uh, the Master Champs in Ipswich this year. Again, hopefully it all happens. So we're going to go and do one of the, the British rounds a couple of weeks before just to nice. suss out the, the OAPs, you know. The competition, yeah. Yeah. So I thought there was like an M30s category, but there's not. I'm in with the elites. So, yeah. Yeah. So, and they just separate them out, do they, and the results? They will, they will do, but I just would like to go over and sort of see if it's worthwhile to go on the Ipswich and you know, that sort of thing, or uh, it's, hopefully it's give them enough, enough time off, you know. Yeah, no, that that would be good. No, I'm so, looking forward. I'm looking forward to getting back. Well, hopefully getting back racing. It's, yeah, fingers crossed. I think there's a what was it? Somebody said there's a it's a rolling road closure on the calendar. So if you go into the calendar, you can see where everything's closed, and then the following week, it's the these races are all cancelled. You know, so. Actually, got an email from Cycling today up, up to the twenty sixth of April. Everything's cancelled at the moment. So, I uh, first Arnie, first Arnie TT is scheduled for that weekend. I think, and I suppose it depends what they say on Thursday. Like, it makes no sense to me. You, you're driving around, you see, you're seeing 30, 30 yeah. people out training on a football pitch, and yeah. you can't have 20, 30 riders on a on a road. I think a time trials will be the first thing to start. Yeah. You know, like I was talking to Mark, yeah. I would have presumed time trials would have been running now because, yeah. like, if you're allowed to rate, if you're allowed to kick a football around with twenty people, you should be allowed to go yeah. off single file on a road bike. Like yeah, it. yeah, yeah. baffles me. I see the club club runs have started back anyway. I think it's it's next week, isn't it? I think it was mon- Monday. Well, just it was Monday, yeah. Just today, yeah. I think because um, open, I think you're allowed to train outdoors and gym, like outdoor That's gym. Right. Yeah, yeah. From, from today so, I, so I yeah fingers it, crossed we get we get racing here some some stage I know. But, uh, you'll be in some form to, to get back racing now with all the swift oh i'll be flying so well so no, I, haven't, <laughs> I haven't touched the bike since i haven't touched the bike since the monday so i have oh. so a week, a week off you know so you, uh man. we get back out of here but uh chris thanks for coming on board and uh first first uh time you get the hands up we'll get you back in again and uh try and break it down a wee bit and see how, how you get on but thank you Cheers, Glenn. Cheers, man. Beginning podcast.